Welcome back to the Muscle Physiology Playlist. This is going to be a video dedicated to what we call the cross-bridge cycle. And I'm kind of taking a deviation here from uh, the normal uh, paintbrush and PowerPoint videos because quite honestly, um, it's a lot more effective in terms of teaching this stuff if you can if you can physically see how things are moving, um, you know from class I like to give you more of a kinesthetic approach to this. Okay, So what you see here is what's referred to as the bicep brachii. Other muscles have been um, eliminated for clarity purposes. Okay, And what's going to happen is when the bicep brachii contracts, it shortens. Okay, So this is a good place to pause it and I want to do a little exercise with you so I want you to have your arm starting out in the extended position so in other words where the angle between your humerus and your radius and ulna is 180 degrees and I want you to put your hand on your bicep at least at the point where it sort of um, kind of gets close to the elbow and keep your hand on that point and then what I want you to do is I want you to flex your arm in other words by a flexion I mean rotate your elbow such that you decrease the angle of the joint like they showed just now in the video. And what you'll find is that your muscle actually shortens. So what you see here is more in the extended position and then what you see is the bicep contracts. And what that means is, is that the bicep is shortening as a whole. Well the question remains is how does the bicep shorten overall? Well it turns out that each of the muscle cells that makes up the muscle as a whole, each muscle cell has functional units called myofibrils. Okay? Um, the functional unit of the myofibril, if we get even more microscopic, is called the sarcomere. And what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the function of the sarcomere. And so let's continue this video. So that's an extension of the arm, in which case the muscle lengthens. Okay. So now we're zooming in on this muscle and we're going to look at what's referred to as the cross bridge cycle. Okay, so here what we're doing is we're looking at myofibrils. This right here is the sarcomere, the functional unit. And now what we're doing is we're zooming in right here. And what they're going to show you is that these red filaments right here, these are called the thick filaments. Now what's really important here is the thick filaments have a major protein. It's a contractile protein referred to as myosin. Myosin is not just a contractile protein, it's also an enzyme. And the enzymatic mechanism that it uses is actually what causes it to contract. So the red ones, or this pinkish ones, are going to be the thick filaments. The yellow ones that lie between the thick filaments, those are the thin filaments. The major protein on those is called actin. And actually what we're going to find is that on each actin protein, there's what we call a myosin binding site. And so this is an important point here, is that actin must bind to myosin, or you could view it the other way around. In fact, that's normally how people view it. They say that in order for a cross bridge to form, in the sarcomere, myosin has to bind to actin. And like I said, there's a myosin binding site on actin. And we're going to look at the events that occur on the sarcomere level. Okay, so what's essentially going to happen here is you're going to see the actin filaments right here move towards this point where my mouse is. So notice, notice my positioning of the mouse where I'm going up and down. This point on the sarcomere, this line, is called the M line. M stands for middle. And the reason it's called the M line is because the sarcomere shortens toward this line, towards the M line. In lab, we looked at that model. We're going to look at it again this week. And you're going to see how the sarcomere shortens towards this line right here. And in, in reality, what's happening is the myosin heads attach to the actin or these thin filaments. And the thin filaments are going to get walked ultimately towards this M line. Okay. So here they're showing the thick filaments. The thick filaments are going to be the myosin. The thin filaments are going to be the actin. Okay, and notice what happened. Let's go back and watch that process again. Notice how the sarcomere is shortening toward the M line. Okay, so what's happening are those myosin heads, which are located on the thick filaments, are walking the thin filaments towards the M line. Let's watch that one more time. Okay, so notice this line right here at this point the thin filaments are being walked toward that line. Okay, 
So now let's take a look at what ha what's happening on the molecular level. So this right here, you can see it right here. This is a little purple dot right here. You're going to see more of those. Okay, That is what's referred to as a calcium ion in this video, and you're going to see more of them come by. Um, some other things that are important, these blue proteins right here, these circular blue proteins, those are called troponin. And in a separate video, we go over the, um, the functionality of troponin. And troponin is a calcium binding protein. We'll see calcium bind to this protein later on. By the way, the thin filaments are composed of actin. And the actin are the kind of these yellow dots that go around, all around here. And the, the yellow dots are sort of wound together in a helix. And so there's these yellow spherical um, repeating units are the thin filaments. And notice how the green protein tropomycin wraps around it in, in another helical type of arrangement. Well, it turns out that at rest, the tr this green protein called tropomycin, tropomycin covers up the myosin binding sites on actin. When the calcium binds to the troponin, what you'll see is that the tropomyosin is going to rotate off of the binding sites. And you'll, I think you'll see pretty clearly what the binding sites are as soon as the tropomyosin rotates off of the actin. Okay, So what's going to happen is this calcium and some others are going to bind to these troponin molecules. That's going to cause tropomyosin, this green helical protein, to rotate off of the myosin binding sites on these actin um, subunits of the thin filament. So hopefully you'll see that right here. So here comes the calcium ions and you'll see some more come and they're going to bind to troponin and notice what's going to happen is the tropomyosin, here's the troponin with the calcium, the tropomyosin which is in green is going to rotate off of the myosin binding sites on actin. Okay, so now hopefully you see these little black dots right here. Okay, those are the binding sites for myosin. And so what you'll see is at certain points in the myosin cycle, the myosin can actually bind to those sites. So we're going to see how that occurs now. So what the myosin head will literally do is it will form an attachment here with the thin filaments. Okay, so here's kind of the assumption we're going to make um, here um, when we're looking at the cycle of myosin. So this red thing right here that kind of looks like a golf club in a sense, this is the myosin head, and this is sort of literally what they look like. They're sort of in an arrangement like this. So what we're going to do in this video is we are going to make the assumption that the, the cycle of myosin begins with the cross bridge. Okay, The cross bridge is essentially the, the interaction or binding of myosin to the myosin binding site and actin, meaning that myosin and actin are physically connected. We're going to start our cycle with that connection there. Okay, In other textbooks, you may see um, the cycle begin at different points. This is just where I choose to start the cycle. So you're making an assumption that you know this, this cross bridge is already formed. Okay. What's going to happen is there's going to be a molecule of ATP that comes in, and you'll see that in just a minute. So this is the myosin head. That molecule that kind of looks like a pill that's coming in, that's representative of adenosine triphosphate. What you're going to see is that when adenosine triphosphate binds to the myosin head, it's going to cause detachment of myosin from actin. So let's see how that occurs. So ATP binds, and notice what happened. You can There's just a small gap there, but notice that myosin just detached from actin. That's what we call cross-bridge detachment. Okay. okay, so now myosin is detached. Now that little flash of light that occurred there, that was ATP hydrolysis. Okay, um, what I recommend doing if you're looking at this in the context of organic and biochemistry is I'll have another video on the myosin um, mechanism that was actually recently determined using quantum mechanics. I recommend that you go look at that, that particular mechanism and you'll kind of see um, how ATP relates to this. But if you go back and kind of watch that step, let's go back a little bit, ATP gets hydrolyzed into adenosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphate. Okay. What that's going to do, as you'll see now, is it's going to activate the myosin head. And when we say activate it, typically what we mean is it gets cocked into the activated position. So this position right now where it is, it's inactivated. But when you, when you hydrolyze ATP, you release some energy. In the context of chemistry, we call that Gibbs free energy. And that energy is going to cock myosin's head into the activated position. Okay. 
So you'll see it kind of move into the activated position, assuming I hit play. Okay, there we go. And the myosin head is going to get cocked into the activated position. Okay. So at this point right here, the myosin head has bound ADP, that's this little bright yellow sphere, has bound phosphate, that's the little red sphere, and so now myosin is in the activated position, and it's going to be able to bind to a myosin binding site on actin. So let's continue. Okay. So now what we're assuming, we're going to go back and look at these steps in, in kind of the same detail. So we're, we're starting with myosin bound to actin. Okay, so once again, we're going to kind of see the same story. So myosin's bound to actin. Okay, what's going to happen? ATP comes in and causes cross bridge detachment. Okay, so you'll see myosin detach from actin. The next step is going to be ATP hydrolysis. ATP is going to get hydrolyzed into adenosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphate, and that's going to cock the myosin head into the activated position as shown there. Okay. In this one, they call this step one, but basically what's going to happen now is the cross bridge is going to form. So myosin is going to spontaneously bind to actin. And then what's going to happen is a series of processes. Okay. Notice that molecule that just left. Okay. That's phosphate. It turns out that when phosphate leaves the myosin head, okay, it strengthens the interaction between myosin and actin. So what you're going to see here is an increase in the strength of the myosin actin interaction. Okay, so the strength is increased. Okay, and then what's going to happen is something referred to as the power stroke. So the first thing that happens is ADP dissociates. So when ADP dissociates from the myosin active site, it's going to result in a very strong power stroke, as you'll see here. Okay, so hopefully you can kind of see that contraction of the myosin head. And one important thing to kind of point out here is that, um, and, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong on this in the comments, but as far as I know, this movement of myosin where, it, where, the, where the head contracts and moves the thin filament, that movement when ADP dissociates, I believe is the largest conformational change in any protein in human biochemistry. So it's a very large contraction with respect to the total volume of this protein. Let's watch that again because it's really important. Kind of go back a little bit. So phosphate dissociates, with, with, which strengthens the myosin-actin interaction, and then ADP dissociates from the myosin-active site, and then what you get is the power stroke. Notice the contraction. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. We're now going to watch this in real time with a bunch of myosin molecules, and they are con they're continuously, in the presence of ATP, they're pulling the actin filaments toward the M line. So this is literally what's happening. Go back here, and hopefully what you see is on a more macroscopic scale, the thin filaments are going to be pulled toward the M line of the sarcomere. And that's all due to myosin contraction.